Wow, maybe this wasn't the greatest idea to do a video tonight. Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video, I just wanna show off the last books that I've acquired that I haven't officially like hauled on the channel. And overall, even though I wasn't, you know, around for much of 2022, I actually didn't buy tons and tons of books. Uh, I've been trying to be more conscious of, you know, just not going crazy with the collection and the library and whatnot. Um, the majority of my books, unless they're gifts and whatnot, are uh, used anyways, but uh, there's only eight books here that I bought from a, I guess, used library type store. Uh, down in Southern Maine, and it just happened to be eight for eight uh, with the nature books. Uh, I do apologize. My allergies are like destroying me apparently uh, recently since this weekend. But uh, let's just, yeah, go ahead and get started. Uh, first up, we have Rachel Carson's The Edge of the Sea. Uh, she's probably most known for Silent Spring, but she has the Sea Trilogy, uh, which actually helped uh, kind of uh, make her famous in like literary circles and whatnot for her writing skills. Uh, the Edge of the Sea, uh, going along with uh, Under the Sea Wind and The Sea Around Us, and I believe this is the third book in the trilogy. I actually already have a cop, a hardcover copy of it, but I just thought the uh, I don't know the artwork here on the cover was really nice, and I think it was a dollar at the bookstore, so uh, I think all their mass markets were a dollar. So I was like, yeah, I can't like go too too wrong uh, with that, and I just. You know, liked it. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to go from smallest to biggest books, I guess. It's kind of how I have them stacked here, but let's just uh, go to the next one. I uh, This one, I've never heard of the author, never heard of the book, uh, but when I just, it sounded like an interesting title with The Pine Island Paradox, and it's by Kathleen Dean Moore, Making Connections in a Disconnected World. And I was like, what is this? Um, and the, the reason I ended up picking it up was uh, just kind of like the different blurbs and the synopsis and whatnot. Uh, it's a, just an essay collection kind of connecting personal experiences with nature, but also with like a heavy emphasis on like psychology and philosophy um, and sort of like the disconnect, uh, I guess, between uh, different things. Uh, let me just uh, read some of the blurbs. Uh, uh, Moore challenges the notion set forth by a succession of Western philosophers that islands, whether physical or metaphorical, isolate us. Combining memoir, nature writing, and ecological and philosophical musings, she evokes a vision of the interrelation of life all joined beneath the surface. So I honestly don't <laughs> don't really know too, too much uh, what I'm getting into with this one. But I really, I used to read a lot more philosophy back in like my college days and stuff. And every now and then I try to pick it up. Um, I did read uh, If Nietzsche Were a Narwhal a couple months ago, and it was fantastic. So I'm kind of hoping this is kind of like a cool blend of nature and philosophy. So I'll let you guys know how that ends up going. Why do I keep putting them over there? I purposely have two stacks. But anyways, next up we have Jen Jennifer Ackerman's The Bird Way, a new look at how birds talk, work, play, parent, and think. Um, from the author of The Genius of Birds, which I have read... I think I did a review on this channel a long, long time ago, but Genius of Birds. I also have Birds by the Shore, but I have to read that one as well. But it is kind of nice, like, having uh, the collection, the set there. Uh, she's actually written a couple other books. I think one of them was, like, on The Common Cold, which I'm trying to, th you know, consider. Maybe these aren't, this is an allergy. I don't know. Um, anyways, they're very highly regarded. Uh, I really enjoyed The Genius of Birds. Very... Uh, I guess technical, maybe not technical. It's kind of like in between popular science writing and like academic, mo not monograph, but academic y kind, of, you know, only for science people. It was kind of like a more of a blend between the two. Uh, like maybe like the next step up be beyond like a pop, just a purely popular science work uh, in a good way. It's still very readable and stuff, but just lots of the actual like research and stuff kind of thrown in there. So I think this is just kind of like an expansion on that work. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to, I know I'm going to enjoy it. So that's why I picked that one up when I saw it. All right. Next up, we have In Maine, Essays on Life Seasons by John Cole. Not going to lie. I, I've i seen this book, like not maybe a million times. So I've seen this book around, um, especially like, you know, on vacations in Southern Maine and stuff. Uh, I do have, a, I think, like five or six essays on like, nature in Maine and stuff so when I saw it I was like I might as well just like pick it up <laughs> and add it to the collection at some point um but yeah it's just a bunch of different essays on you know living in Maine and the great outdoors <laughs> as I choke on the essay collection and I'm back wow that was embarrassing 
Uh, next up, we have Birding Without Borders, an obsession of Quest, and the biggest year in the world by Noah Stricker. Is that not one of the coolest covers you've ever seen, especially for a bird book? Uh, forward by Ken Kaufman. If you guys don't know who that is, it's probably one of the best-selling. Um, f- the Kaufman Field Guide series is, you know, super, super popular. I've read his, let's see, Noah Stricker's The Thing with Feathers uh, a long time ago, and I really, really enjoyed it, where he profiles, I think, ten of his favorite birds. I'm not gonna lie, I've already read this book uh, for Nonfiction November, actually, for Borders, you know. I figured that was a pretty easy prompt for that one, but uh, this book is all about his big year where he broke... Uh, I think it's been broken since, but he broke the world record for the most number of bird species sighted over the course of a year. Um, and it's just sort of all his adventures and doing that, kind of the, you know, the planning, the trials, all the hiccups and planning and all that kind of stuff that has to go into that. And also all, one of the things I really loved about this book was he purposely, like 99% of the time, did his birding with other people that were native to like the country he was birding in uh, that he connected like online with beforehand and whatnot just really absolutely loved it might do a full review of, of it at some point if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much i actually have a bigger sign i know i've been like using my little david throw si- signs for some reason but i make bigger signs and even bigger signs than this one as well i saw lots of nature philosophy latin quotes you know anything like that do custom work whatever just like some items like the shop you know comment like subscribe all that kind of good stuff uh, anyways this one is about this life by barry lopez which shamefully i've not read any of barry lopez's work uh he recently passed i can't remember if it was last year or the year before um i have his arctic dreams which is like one of the highest regarded like uh travel writing you know works and he's got a whole slew of them um, and I think a posthumous book, uh, something about the, I say it's about the burning world or something like that. I'll probably put it up, up, up there or whatever. Um, anyways, he's been really highly regarded as like, you know, one of the greatest travel writers, I guess, of all time. And I've not read anything. So I thought, you know, if I pick it up, it'll force me to read it, which I don't, that doesn't make any sense because I have Arctic Dreams and I haven't read that one either, but I need to at some point. Like, I've never, I've only heard good things, so I'm just being foolish. Next up, we have Jane Goodall's uh, Through a Window My 30 Years with the Chimpanzees of Gombe. Um, I've read a couple of Jane Goodall's other works, uh, most recently, the uh, what? The Book of Hope. I really enjoyed that one. Um, she's just a really great, charismatic person. Like, definitely check out some of her, like, lectures and just talks and stuff online. Uh, she's just super down to earth super humble even though she's like you know this famous super scientist and whatnot um but like even a lot of her like human rights activism stuff um is really successful and productive and everything just definitely check out jane goodall's stuff um i can't get enough of like you know just like learning about her stuff plan on reading like all her works at some point might take a little while but i will get there and then last up is another author that i've shamefully never actually read and it is Stephen Jay Gould's Dinosaur in a Haystack, Reflections in Natural History. This is an essay collection of um, articles that he penned for Natural History and other science magazines. I think he also wrote for like Smithsonian Magazine, if I remember correctly and whatnot. And he's regarded as like one of the best sort of science writers, you know, of the uh, like 80s and 90s. Uh, particularly on like animal evolution and animal adaptations and things like that. Uh, he also made a name for himself uh, just in evolutionary theory and whatnot with uh, his, the concept of punctuated equilibrium where I think he and his colleague when they were studying the fossils and the Burgess Shale, uh, I think in Canada, uh, were basically instead of evolution kind of happening, you know, uh, of course, I don't, you know, and then like a nice like kind of steady line i guess uh, you know just progression uh what happens is like you know it's pretty everything's pretty equal you know in equilibrium then you have some like a uh, you know extinction event or just some sort of catastrophic event and then evolution happens like fairly rapidly all of a sudden um basically to fill in kind of the the niches and voids that are like left open uh but anyways like i said there's an essay cl- I've, I've been reading a lot of essay collections recently for some reason i just i don't know if i really enjoy the kind of the shorter writing stuff maybe it's not shorter writing style but the more pun, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, just the shorter topics, I guess, sometimes, um, but like I said, he's highly regarded as just a great, um, you know, uh, animal writer and whatnot, science, you know, 
what's what's the word I'm looking for? There's a term for it. Where scientists like convey information to the public, but it, I'm just you know just being numb right now. But anyways, Stephen Jay Gould is an author that I want to get to. He's got like twenty books, and I think half of them are like his essay collections and whatnot. So. I have a feeling if I like this one, it might be bad for my shoulders and whatnot. But uh, anyways, those are the eight books that I picked up uh, over the course of like the past uh, several months. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do a book haul every month uh, just because I don't pick books up too often anymore. I got to like you know, get through some of these ones that I have, uh, but probably we'll do a library tour. And when I do that, maybe I'll calculate what the percentages of like read to unread is on each shelf and things like that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, putting up with my voice and coughing fits and whatnot. But uh, whatever you end up reading that you picked up recently, hopefully you enjoy it. And always remember, read victoriously.